So I would like to start by defining mental illness as a uh, umbrella term that refers to a combination of thought, of changes in thought, emotion, or behavior that are related to distress and or problems functioning in social, work, and familial environments. The symptoms associated with a mental illness can limit the person's ability to uh, be active and participate with the world around them. And this meets the definition of a disability. But what does this mean for students with a mental illness? Well, before we answer that question, it's important to understand what it actually means to be a person with a mental illness and why they might choose to identify as a person with a disability. I'd like to encourage you to consider the impairments in perception and participation associated with mental illnesses and how this might interact with the concept of identity. A composition of attitudes, self-knowledge, social roles, relationships, and group affiliations that influence the way we think and interact with the world. Our social identities are shaped by the relationships we have with other people. In an environment where stigma is associated with mental illnesses, this can mean avoiding disclosure or help seeking as a means of avoiding a damaging or a negative label. So then why would someone choose to have a disability identity? Well, it ultimately depends on what's in the best interest for that person. The self-determination theory of motivation proposed by Ryan and Deceit suggests that people will be most motivated to behave in ways that affirm their sense of autonomy, competency, and relatedness. When fulfilled, this will lead the person to become self-determined. Autonomy is a feeling of control and approval over one's choices and behavior, while uh, competency is a feeling of mastery and effectiveness while engaging in an activity, and relatedness is a sense of connection and belonging to others. Thus, according to STT, people with mental illnesses will identify as a person with a disability as long as this affirms their sense of autonomy, competency, and relatedness. When considering behavior, it's paramount that we understand its context. context. For incoming students, it's important to consider the stresses associated with the transition to university life. Schlossberg describes this stress as a natural consequence of having to navigate new environments, relationships, academic demands, etc. For people with a mental illness, the transition to a university can be exasperated. The transition stress to university can be exasperated. For example, having additional time commitments, such as appointments with the Health and Counseling Center, or they might have to manage symptoms that can complicate co the completion of academic tasks, like issues with motivation or with concentration, fatigue, or this, having to manage the side effects of medication. And it can also make it harder for them to establish new social networks. For example, in the case uh, of social anxiety disorder. Second, they might enroll in university with a pre-existing history of mental health treatment and support use. This can influence their attitudes towards help seeking on campus. O'Shea and Mayer found that the more services a student had accessed in high school was associated with a relative degree of access to, to supports in post-secondary. They could also have had negative experiences disclosing a mental illness disability. And this could stop them from wanting to disclose in a post-secondary setting, which would ultimately injure their access to services on campus. But not all disabilities are visible and neither are their symptoms. Here I've included a, an image that reads, I only take 10 minutes in the shower, but I need at least an hour staring into space on my bed afterwards. And this could be perceived as an example of that. Because of the non-visible nature of mental illnesses, people are often able to choose whether they would like to or to not adopt a disability identity. Here I have a non-exhaustive list of what someone might consider when deciding to or to not adopt a disability identity. For example, identifying with a disability can give per the person access to other similarly disabled people. This can improve their ac access to social and emotional resources, increase their confidence in managing their own mental illness, and it can help buffer against internalized stigma. In students, disability identities has been associated with an improved understanding and self-advocacy for accommodations, such as writing supports or personalized education plans. But unfortunately, disabilities are stigmatized, and identifying with one can mean navigating uh, ascribed traits, which are traits attributed to you because you hold a certain characteristic. It can damage the person's credibility 
or elicit negative perceptions from peers. For example, peers who perceive your academic accommodations as unfair academic advantages. And you can also contribute to a reduced self-concept, well-being, and quality of life that is relatively common among people who hold a disability label. But what do we want to know? Well, we want to understand how many students with a mental illness are identifying with a disability identity. The differences between people who do and those who don't. Whether a disability identity impacts sense of belonging or help seeking uh, on campus. And what can be improved so that we, as a university, can better support students with a mental illness. To do this, we'll be inviting state of X students of all years to participate in a short survey for a chance to win a $25 gift card to Starbucks. So in order to understand the population of students who are identifying with a disability, we will be asking them to report whether they identify as a person with a hidden, a visible, both a hidden and a visible, or no disability. In terms of their relationship with this identity, we will use the personal disability identity scale of acceptance and affirmation. This measure asks participants on a scale from one strongly disagree to five strongly agree how they feel about each of the eight prompts, such as, in general, I'm glad to be a person with a disability, or my disability sometimes makes me feel ashamed. In terms of the differences between students with mental illnesses, we will be asking them to uh, report what mental illness diagnosis they have and how severe they perceive this mental illness to be. This will help us understand how often a disability identity is being adopted among students of a certain diagnosis and severity. In order to measure help seeking, we will ask students to rate their attitude towards help seeking in response to each of the prompts on a seven point scale. I've included the first uh, question as an example here with minus three indicating useless and positive three indicating useful. Sense of belonging will be measured using the psychological sense of school membership scale and this asks students to respond on a scale from one strongly disagree to five strongly agree their level of agreement to each of the 18 prompts. The final area of this study aims to gather feedback and an understanding from students on how the university can improve their supports of students. Support of students. Um, the first question is a simple yes or no question, and this will help us understand if students are aware of how and where to get support if they need it. Whereas the second two questions are open-ended, and this will give participants the opportunity to provide feedback on their experiences and will be used to develop uh, suggestions for future improvement of St. Effect supports for students with mental illnesses and disabilities. In terms of hypotheses, uh, we predict that students who report moderate or severe mental illnesses will be more likely to adopt a disability identity. Second, if these students with a moderate or severe perceived mental illness do adopt a disability identity, that they will have more positive attitudes towards help seeking and experience a higher sense of belonging. And then I would just like to spread my thanks to people who helped me realize this project, including um, my supervisor, Dr. Austin, my second reader, Dr. Uh, Dr. McKenna, um, funding that I received from Research Nova Scotia, was, which let me work on this over the summer, and some much needed moral support from my parents.